Hey guys, welcome back to another Starless video, and today's video I'm doing the Viceroy. The Viceroy is a capital ship in the Confederacy Tech Tree. It's a tier 5 capital, and the tier Confederacy Tech Tree is located at the very top. It's You have to get it, you have to grind through the Resonant, the Rescurant Dreadnought. Uh, from the from here, it's, you know, blah 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 blah. You get the idea from where you come from with it. Now, the Viceroy is a very mixed ship. Not mixed in how good or bad it is, but mixed in its weaponry. It has a lot of flak. It has fourteen flak CIS flak, which is already quite a lot. But then it has another fourteen hybrid small turbo lasers. Or lasers, it's not really turbo lasers, they're just normal lasers. But what that means is, is this thing practically has 28 flak guns, if you want to think of it that way. Which is a lot for a capital ship. On top of that, it also has a fighter wing. Being the Confederacy, it has vulture fighters, and the vulture fighters are very low health, so you have a lot of them. There's not, they don't have that much health, but in total... You have about 1,200 fighter health, which is pretty good for a capital, especially a capital of its size and a capital with the amount of flak it has. This means it's a perfect fleet support vessel. You can also defend from brawlers because not only does it have lots of flak, it also has a lot of heavy weaponry, super turbo lasers, large turbo lasers, experimental disruptors, heavy broadsides. Now I'm going to talk about some of the weaponry on this because the weaponry is quite unique. The health isn't very unique, it's basically the same amount of health as a Luka Hulk battleship. It's not much to fester about, but one thing you should point out is the two experimental disruptors on the bottom here, they both each do... Uh, 5,000, you can see here, uh, roughly 6,000 damage, uh, but they do have a D multiplier of half, they do half their damage uh, against normal health, but they, against shield, sorry, against normal health, they do their same damage, but what's good about them is this thing, they have 50 kilometer range, meaning this thing technically has a 50 kilometer range, which is really good for a Star Wars ship, most Star Wars brawlers don't have that range. And um, another uh, thing to talk about would be the ultra-heavy broadside cannons. These are some of the largest guns in the game because they fire four bursts and each burst does 12,000 damage. So in total, this thing does 48,000 damage per salvo. Uh, on Not per salvo, you know, like per firing of this gun. So you can turn to look this way, fire... Turn to look this way and fire, and you've done you've done ninety six thousand damage. Uh, they do have a firing arc. You pretty much have to be like facing the enemy like this. You don't have to be like facing like this, like the invisible hand, just like this, which is all right. It does mean some of the guns here can't fire, but you still have one side of the guns that can all fire. Most of the flak is located up here, along with the other heavy weaponry. The small hybrid guns are located here. And one thing I do like to say is. Guess where the Confederacy Bridge is? Ooh! Now, some keen people will know that the Confederacy like to use observatory towers, just like the Mon Calamari. The bridge is here, and this is actually an observatory tower. But anyway, enough rambling, let's get into it. So that's the broadside there. You can't quite see it like a normal laser, it's like a, it's like a small projectile. And I'm hoping in future they update the sound because it just sounds like a normal CIS turbo uh, broadside. One good thing about the Flak 2 is the Flak also has a 10 kilometer range and is more accurate the further the way, uh, further away the fighters are. Meaning, and Tyre's bombers, which are normally um, the most annoying pests on the planet, quite simply because they can just outrange your, your point defense most of the time, they can't outrange the point defense on the Viceroy. And this is even better because, the Vi like I said earlier, the Viceroy's flak cannons get more accurate the further, the way, the further away the bombers are. Meaning Antares just gets screwed over by these things. And that's the flak. <laughs> you can see here it, it's intercepting quite a few things. Uh, one thing I must say, this map is so heavily one-sided for one side. Look, look at all this space the yellow team has to go in. And then look where we are, we're on the very edge here. I have complained about this. I've, I've, I've made two suggestions about this twice now, 
And so far, I, it, it must be such an easy fix, but I haven't seen any of the devs do anything about it. And it really frustrates me because it, you can't win as the green side. It's physically impossible. Like, the only, time, only reason why we're winning right now is because for some reason the enemy team are not over there. Like, all it takes is, like, one, one Mon Calamari Tier 5 to sit in here and basically be untouchable. You do have access to these ion cannons, uh, not ion cannons, sorry, uh, ion torpedoes, and they do extra damage to shields. I think they do in total, maybe like 10,000 damage. And then a lot of the CIS ships now also have magnetic torpedoes, which are really good at taking out cloaked vessels. So you're also, not only can you act as a point defense ship, uh, an anti-brawler, anti-carrier. You can also act as anti-stealth. Like you're, the Viceroy is a very all-round ship. It can do pretty much everything. You can play it on pretty much every map, but long-range maps, like super long-range. I mean, like 70 kilometers spawn range. The flak has a accuracy of 23% and does about 20 to 30 damage, which and reloads every 0.5 seconds. So you can imagine. That starts to add up when they start doing lots of damage combined with your fighters. Fire all the flak cannons! Kill the CPV! It's lagging! It's warping off somewhere. It's warping over. Need to adjust our fire. So laggy though. All right, should be doing it by now. And there we go, he's dead. There we go, some flags going off. Let's just scramble our fighters. We have we're Confederacy fighters. We pretty much can just press scramble, and that happens. And it only takes what seven seconds for all the tri fighters to come back. Seven seconds for all these vultures to come back. And only 20 seconds for the bomber. All the bombers will come back. And there you go. There's match. And to finish it off with a bunch of flak guns. Woohoo! Flak guns! Just wanted to do one more clip of showing off the Viceroy's complete salvo. The gun angle is a little bit weird. You do need to face completely head on with the enemy. Otherwise, the guns go off in different directions. Now that his shields are down. I do more damage. I don't really care if I die here. It's more or less just to show, ooh, damage. This is how much damage the Viceroy does. And as you can see, minus the lag, it does a decent amount of damage and has decent point defense. So I'm shooting down quite a considerable amount. It's very good at shooting down missiles as long as, as and it's very good at shooting down fighters too. It's, it's overall the really, really good fighters and I believe the server is now officially dying, so I think everyone has seen a considerable good amount of how the uh, Viceroy does in damage, and it does a very good job at, um, it does even more damage actually, because in total these add in quite a bit of DPS. The DPS of the Viceroy is maximum it can do is 11,000, the lowest it can do is 8,000 a second, which it is really good. Uh, it's really good compared to a lot of other ships. And I think I will leave it there. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe. Comment down below what you want to see next. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.